Consciously Creating Circumstances. Written by George W. Plummer in 1937. Narrated by Richard Schaefer. Chapter 4. The Great Link. If you followed the discussion carefully, so you have thoroughly in your mind these ideas. A. All is one in the universal mind. B. You personally are an individualized channel for expression of that one mind. C. In your human existence, you use that mind both objectively and subjectively. D. Your subjective or subconscious mind can be controlled by your objective or conscious mind, and it carries out orders automatically. E. Ordinarily, these orders relate to the usual body regulating functions of the subjective, but it will also act on orders and other types of activity. Let us now set ourselves definitely to see that there are, in fact, other kinds of orders which the subjective will accept from the objective and carry out. To do so, we shall adjourn to the vaudeville theater. There we see a hypnotist at work. By means of a few passes in front of a person's face, he gets him under his control. Just what do we mean by under his control? This is what we mean. He disconnects the hypnotized person's subjective or subconscious mind from his objective mind. And then the hypnotist substitutes his own objective mind to control the hypnotized person's subjective or subconscious mind. There is no other possible explanation, and the fact of hypnosis has been amply demonstrated scientifically. All right, the hypnotist has you under control, let's say. Your objective thinking mind is asleep. You remember absolutely nothing of what is done to you under hypnosis, after you come out of it. Meanwhile, the hypnotist has had you under his control. Or, to put it more exactly, your bodily functions ruled by the subjective have been completely under the control of his objective mind. This is extremely important. Simply by ordering you to run around the stage and bark like a dog, he has made you do so. Your subjective or subconscious mind does not ask itself why it should cause your body to act like a dog. It automatically accepts the order given it and immediately carries it out to the best of its ability, either at once or as soon as it is able to do so. There is scarcely any limit to what the subjective subconscious mind can be made to do in this manner. Now you perhaps see more clearly why we have said that the subjective or subconscious mind receives orders and acts on them automatically, without arguing as to their sense. Certainly if some other person, such as a hypnotist, can impress his will on your subjective or your subconscious mind, you yourself can do the same thing, much more easily with your own objective mind. One other important point is found in our study of the hypnotist. Ordinarily, your subjective or subconscious mind is only dealing with your own objective mind, but it can deal with somebody else's objective mind without knowing the difference. Otherwise, the hypnotist could not control you. Your subjective or subconscious mind is therefore entirely impersonal. That is only another way of saying that your subjective or subconscious mind is universal in its reactions. It does not discriminate as to persons or reasons, why, or pros and cons. How different in this respect is your objective mind? It is very keenly aware of the differences between persons. It sifts reasons. It argues pros and cons. It definitely does discriminate. Hence, your objective mind is not universal in its use by you. It is decidedly specific, and rightly so for being of use on the plane of the specific, or, in other words, the world in which you live. Now we are ready to take the big step forward. 
We have already found that the basic source of all power on all planes, physical, mental, or emotional, is the universal mind. Now we have just discovered that only one aspect of your mind's activity, the subjective, is likewise universal in its reactions. Hence, we see that your individualized subjective subconscious mind is your immediate personal link with the universal mind. It is your great link with all else that is. And since all things are possible to the universal mind, the power of an individual expression of that universal mind, such as your own subjective subconscious mind, is limited only by the arbitrary conditions of time, space, force, and the other natural laws under which you as a human being are limited. But it has no further limitations. In other words, your subjective or subconscious mind could not cause you to rise up from the chair where you are sitting and float above the room. It could not cause you to expand instantaneously to a height of 20 feet. It could not enable you to scratch your right elbow with your right hand. All those things are physically impossible, made so in our arbitrary world of time and space. But your subjective subconscious mind, having access to the vast power of the universal subjective mind, can accomplish anything which is not prohibited by the laws of time and space. To be specific, it can make your body strong and well. It can attract to you the kind of life mate that you want. It can make you a capable citizen of your community with proper compensation to you for your services. It can, in short, make you successful and happy. How it does so comes next. But don't go on to that until you are sure you understand the trend of our thoughts so far. Do you see, truly, that you are an expression of universal mind? Do you realize that this is made manifest in you through your subjective or subconscious mind? Do you see why the subjective or subconscious mind can accomplish anything for you that is not contrary to the laws of our world? And finally, do you recall that your subjective or subconscious mind is under the control of your objective mind, ready to obey it down to the last detail? If you have come so far without lagging behind, you are now ready to take the most important step of all. In fact, you have probably anticipated me and done it already.